Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. You've probably heard by now that there's a bunch of new ARM-based Windows computers hitting the market. I've got one here on the desk already. This is the HP OmniBook X, which is on loan from HP, and Lenovo's got one that's coming in tomorrow. And I'm going to do full reviews of each of these individually, but in this video, I wanted to focus on a few of the features that are specific to these Copilot Plus PCs running with the Snapdragon X Elite processor because these are capable of doing some degree of on-device artificial intelligence. And to be honest with you, I'm not all that impressed with these features and I thought it might be better to just pull them out and talk about them here in this video and then we could spend more time on the attributes of these machines individually because I think the selling point for these is not their AI features but their battery longevity and potentially performance which is what I'll be exploring as I continue testing these computers. So we're going to dive into the AI stuff now, and we'll have more later on this one and the other one when it gets here. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this computer is on loan from HP. When we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's take a look at these AI features now, and then I'll get back to testing it. All right, so we're gonna start off inside of the Paint application, and this works just like Paint has worked since the Windows 3.1 days, except they've got a new feature here called Co-Creator. Now, what you see on screen here is my rudimentary rocket ship orbiting the Earth. This is about the best artwork that I can do. But if I tap on Co-Creator here, uh, what I can do is tell the app or the AI what I am looking for, and then it will render a higher quality version of it using my image as a guide. Now you do have to put a prompt in because it won't know what to do with your image just by looking at it, but it does look at the elements of the image based on the prompt that you're giving it to generate something special for you here. Now right now, as you can see, it doesn't look much different. That's because I have the creativity turned down. But if I turn the creativity up, what it will do is start uh, making some creative decisions here. And right now it kind of looks like that uh, thing from Star Trek 4, so we'll just have it kind of keep generating here until we get something decent. And uh, as I keep adjusting this, you get varying degrees of success, but the planet looks a lot cooler. The rocket, I guess, looks a little bit better now. And then I also have the ability to have a different style here, so I could maybe do it in anime style. So it'll go out and do that, and you can see the MPU is really working here. Um, I can have it render it as a pixel art, so we can kind of give it a little bit of an 8 or 16-bit feel here, as you can see. So you have some cool options here to make it look a little different. And what I can do here is also add additional elements. So if I go and hit this uh, oval here, I'm going to make sure that I've got a fill here. Yep, and I'm going to fill it with yellow. And I'm just going to put this into the image. And after I drop the image here, what's going to happen is CoCreator will now add that element to the mix. And I can then uh, go through some of these different options here and finish it up. Now, if I hit the button here, what it will do is replace my image with what it generated. And as you can see here, it does an okay job, but because this is all running on device, you're not gonna get the kind of image quality that you would expect from something like ChatGPT or the DALL-E image generator that it uses or some of the other ones out there that have a lot more horsepower at their disposal. But compared to other on-device image generators I have played with, this is a lot easier to work with. So you have less dials to turn. It will generally give you something somewhat useful, I guess, uh, in a pinch. But again, it's more of a gee whiz feature than anything else. But it is kind of fun to watch the MPU uh, chew on and process those images. Oddly, this is running on device. However, it requires an internet connection. So watch what happens when I turn off my Wi-Fi here. So let me just switch off the Wi-Fi. And when I turn it off, if it lets me here, um, it will actually uh, not work. So there we go, we disabled the Wi-Fi. And if I jump in here to add some more information, you can see that an internet connection is required. And the reason it needs an internet connection is because Microsoft is having their servers review your request before you submit it to make sure that you don't do anything that they deem is inappropriate. So they are doing some editorializing of what you're submitting to make sure that you're not going to do something they don't like. So although this is an offline procedure in that it's actually generating on device, 
you still need to communicate with Microsoft servers to make sure that you're using their software the way they want you to use it. So that was a bit of a turnoff for me, and it's not all that uh, interesting to me, to be honest with you. It's kind of cool. I think it's got potential. I am sure that they're hoping third-party developers will do more with this, but right now, this is what you get at least for one of the exclusive features. Now they've got another feature here called Image Creator, which I have not been able to get to work. And apparently this feature uses DALL-E, so this is going out to the internet to generate an image. And what you can do is ask it to create something and it will make it for you. You're supposed to get 50 credits to work with as part of your uh, installation here, but I have zero credits and I can't generate anything. So I was not able to try out the Image Creator feature here in my testing. Let's take a look now though at the Photos app and see what kind of AI we can do with my photos. All right, so I've got my ugly mug up here on screen and if I click on the edit button here, uh, what we can do is jump into the edit screen that you're probably familiar with. And one of the features that the Copilot Plus PCs get is this AI enhancement option. So if I click on that, I can do some different things here. So why don't we say, uh, put me out in space with a planet and stars. And if I hit enter here, it will start generating. And again, we've got a creativity dial here. And you can also see that the MPU is working to generate that. And I guess I get kind of a galaxy effect here. I can turn the creativity up a little bit maybe and get a little bit more. Let's see if we get something else. Okay, so there you go. Nothing crazy. Unfortunately, I can't change the entire image because there's a face in the photo and it will not let me manipulate faces. So I can't get like a cool anime effect of me because they do not allow you to edit people's imagery, even your own with your own permission. Again, this is one of the uh, controls that they've put on this to prevent people from doing different things with it. All right, so now I've got an image of a space shuttle on the launch pad. And if we jump over to my screen here, you can see that I've given it a prompt already. And I found with this, you have to tell it what's in the picture or it will just totally destroy it. So I'm gonna tell uh, the AI that I want a space shuttle on the launch pad at night with a moon beaming down from above. And I'm gonna hit the button here and see what it can do for me. So let's submit that. I've got it kind of at the 50% mark for creativity. And as you can see here, it's, I guess, sort of at night, but it totally mangles the image. And as I turn the creativity up, it just gets worse. <laughs> so it's kind of a gimmicky feature here. I'm guessing the background thing is probably more useful than this. Um, but again, it's just not something I would buy a computer for. And although it's neat that it's happening on device, this could be a lot better. Let's take a look at one of the other features now. So right now I'm playing back a video that is in Korean. I can't understand anything they're saying. This is from my friends Aving News. And what I've got running right now is another Copilot feature called Live Captions. And what this is doing is it's making use of the system's NPU, and I'll pull up our little taskbar here again, to do a live translation of what is being said. And it automatically detected that they were speaking Korean, and it's doing that translation here pretty much in real time. Now we're doing this with a video, but this also works with Zoom calls and Microsoft Teams calls and others. So you could get a real-time translation of any language that is running through the audio system here that's supported by this feature. I don't think it does a two-way translation yet. I think it only translates things into English. But again, a neat little feature that runs completely on device. And this one so far is the most useful one I've encountered. Now these Copilot Plus PCs pick up a few extra Windows Studio effects that are lacking on Intel and AMD based devices. Uh, one of the big ones here is that you now get something called eye contact. Watch my eyes here. Now I'm looking down at the screen and you can see that it's moving the position of my eyes to make it look like I'm looking in the camera. <laughs> so you've got some uh, neat little features here that are subtle but will let you always look at the camera even when you're not actually looking at it. This feature is something that I've seen manufacturers add on their own through some third-party drivers, but now it's built into the OS for these ARM-based machines. Uh, you also get maybe a bit of a nicer portrait and standard blur option here if you wanted to blur out your background. This is something Windows can do already, but I think it works a little bit better perhaps uh, with the uh, Copilot Plus computers here. And they also have this creative filter option that will do some neat little filtering here. 
Um, but I've seen this on my phone, and I'm sure many of you have as well, so you can change it to a few different things here. Nothing crazy, um, but you do have a few more options that you didn't have before. So that is it for these Copilot Plus specific features that you will find, at least from Microsoft, on the Snapdragon X Elite computers. Now we will be looking at some features that manufacturers are implementing on each individual unit when we do the individual reviews. But for the most part, I don't think there's a very compelling reason here to choose this PC on the features you just saw alone. Now, there is one feature that Microsoft, of course, is leaving out, which was their biggest one, which was called Recall. And that one arguably was the most useful. And what Recall does, and this is a little scary, is that it takes screenshots of your computer as you're using it. It stores those screenshots and uses the onboard AI to allow you to search back through your prior history. So if you were planning a trip and you couldn't remember the name of the hotel you were looking at, if you just give it a plain English prompt of hotels in Florida, It'll go back through your history and find the website that you were on with the link and an image of the screen so you can recall what you forgot about earlier. And that's pretty useful. The images don't leave the computer, but if somebody gets access to the computer, you're in trouble. So that is why Microsoft hit the pause button on that. And without that big flagship feature, there isn't much here to compel people, I think, to go for this machine over an Intel or AMD-based one. But what we will be exploring in the upcoming reviews is whether or not the advantages that ARM can bring to the mix are enough to put you over the top to buy one of these versus a more traditional PC. I can tell you already the battery life is spectacular on these, but it's been the case on all of the ARM machines prior as well. The issue has been performance and compatibility, so that is what we will be exploring in the upcoming reviews, so stay tuned for that. But I did want to do this video now just so that I have this as context for what you will see coming up. So, until next time, this is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.